morning. Thank you for joining us here at Altoona Christian Church, both those of you who are worshiping virtually with us and those of you who are here on this beautiful morning. Welcome. For those of you who are here, we do ask that you keep your masks on for the duration of the service, except for communion. And if you forgot to grab communion on your way in, feel free to go back out and grab it again. For those of you who are worshiping with us virtually, we do do communion every Sunday because we are disciples, and that's what we do. So I invite you to have your communion elements available to you when we get to that part of the service. We are trying to keep things as contact-free as we can. However, nobody touches the hymnals during the week, so if you like to have music in your hands like I do when you sing, feel free to go ahead and use your hymnal. Just use the one in front of you. Put it back when you're done, and don't hand it to anybody that you're not sitting with. For those of you who are home and would like to have the music, we are working on a way to get it to you. I think that's it. So if you would like to rise in body or spirit and join in our praise hymn, please do so. I invite you to share the peace with one another. Give air hugs, waves. For those of you who are here, I do invite you to turn around and wave at the camera to greet those who are worshiping virtually. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please join your voice with mine as we pray our call to worship as displayed on the screen. Let us praise God for the mighty deeds wrought through Jesus Christ. Praise, praise God, God for loosening the chains, chains of sin. sin. Let us praise God for the mighty deeds wrought through Jesus Christ. Praise, praise God, God for breaking the bonds of death. Let us praise God for the mighty deeds wrought through Jesus Christ. Praise, praise God, God for releasing the forces of love. Amen. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me? Creating God, creator of the universe, of earth, and of us, thank you for this morning, for this time that we have set aside to sit down with one another and to praise your name. 
May you be with us this morning, move in our hearts and in our souls, and go with us as we leave from here after the service. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we bring our joys and concerns to the Lord, let us reply after each joy, thanks be to God. And after each concern, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to be thankful that we are witnesses to the resurrection of Christ in our hearts. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for all that we have, all that we are, and what we are becoming as humans, as a church, and for our part as resurrection people. Thanks be to God. We ask for God's blessings as we join the United Kingdom as they mourn the death of Queen Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask for God's healing of our country as we continue to mourn the many, many senseless deaths of those who continue to lose their lives as a result of mass shootings, including those gunned down last night in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a speedy recovery for Anna Hines, who has had successful gall gallbladder surgery. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Jim and Kay Hamilton as Kay seeks an appropriate memory care unit for her beloved Jim. We also pray for the Hamilton family as they are all affected now by Jim's illness. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Charlie Cooper, who is now in hospice care at home. We pray for a peaceful transition from this life into heaven. We pray, for, uh, we pray our prayers of sympathy for the Ferguson family. Larry's mom died this past week. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the suffering, the dying. We pray for the homeless. We pray for the lonely. We pray for those who have no one to love them or care for them. Let us be the hope in the lives of others. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our church and the members of the transition team led by Pastor Lisa. Lord, hear our Let us take a moment and pray for those people whose names we have not mentioned aloud as they remain close in our hearts. Will you pray with me? Oh God, source of love and compassion in the sufferings of all your children, we offer our compassion also for the hungry and the sick in body, mind, or heart, the depressed and the lonely, all living in fear and under stress, all stricken in grief, the unemployed and the reject rejected, and those burning with hatred. Strengthen us to work for their healing and inspire us to build with you the kingdom of love where none shall cause suffering to others and all be caring, loving children of yours. You are our compassionate, all-embracing God, ever-present, ever-loving, never-failing. Out of your love, you gave us your Son who taught us to pray, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles. Seeing this, Peter addressed the people, You are Israelites. Why are you amazed at this? Why are you staring at us as if we made him walk by our own power or pity? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus. This is the one you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, even though he had already decided to release him. You rejected the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you instead. You killed the author of life, the very one whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses of this. His name itself has made this man strong. That is, because of faith in Jesus' name, God has strengthened this man whom you see and know. The faith that comes through Jesus gave him complete health right before your eyes. Brothers and sisters, I know you acted in ignorance. So did your rulers. But this is how God fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, change your hearts and lives. Turn back to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Thus ends our first reading. Our second scripture this morning comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us in that we should be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. Dear friends, now we are God's children, and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we'll see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves even as he is pure. Every person who practices sin commits an act of rebellion, and sin is rebellion. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and there is no sin in him. Every person who remains in relationship to him does not sin. Any person who sins has not seen him or know him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The person who practices righteousness is righteous in the same way that Jesus is righteous. May God add God's blessing to the hearing of this word. Will you bow your heads with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be pleasing unto you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, First John can be a little confusing without a decent amount of background information. As its title suggests, First John is indeed related to the Gospel of John. It was not 
written by the same person, but 1 John came out of the communities that were reading the Gospel of John. It was written somewhere near the end of the first century. And from reading the rest of the book, which I invite you to do at your leisure, we can assume that the writer was an elder in the community, someone who had a great deal of spiritual leadership. In reading the entire book, we can see that the Johannan communities were undergoing a split. So if anyone ever tells you that we need to return to the unity of the early church, feel free to hold up 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and say, there was no unity in the early church to return to. The split was happening because there were two opposing views on the nature of Christ. The author following the Gospel of John, believed very firmly that Jesus was flesh and blood just like us. Because the Gospel of John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. The other side said that Christ was spirit only, not flesh and blood like the rest of us. By the time this book was written, any hope of reconciliation was gone. The author seems to have written this book because the other side was going around trying to influence people to join their camp. So hold on to the two warring sides in this community. I will come back to this. The author of 1 John firmly believes that Jesus is going to return any day now. And it's alluded to in the other chapters. The verses leading up to our passage this morning illustrate that. And now, little children... Remain in relationship to Jesus, so that when he appears, we have confidence and not be in shame in front of him when he comes. If you know that he is righteous, you also know that every person who practices righteousness is born from him. Those are the two verses right before um, our passage this morning. The author goes on in the beginning of chapter 3 to say that we don't know the full Christ. That yes, Jesus did take on flesh and blood for us, but that doesn't mean we know him completely. We are God's children through Christ, but we don't really know what we will be. And this is because we, the world, don't know what Christ is like. We see him imperfectly in an imperfect world. When Jesus comes back, which was any day, we will see him as he truly is. And we, God's children, will know what we will be. And that's what makes us children of righteousness. We are God's children as best we are able without knowing Christ perfectly. We have an idea of what we will be, even if we aren't there yet. And so, when Jesus does come back, which will be any day now, we, as children of righteousness, will be separated from children of the devil. And we will know Christ Perfectly. Children of the Devil is a pretty harsh name. It doesn't come up in these particular seven verses, but they are mentioned just before and just after. The children of the Devil are the people who have fallen trap to this world. 
And by this world, we mean power, envy, greed, the things that would separate us from the love of God. We, as children of righteousness, are not trapped by this world. The children of the devil are. A few minutes ago, I asked you to remember that the Johannan community was splitting with two, two different factions. So this is where this comes back into play. The author is calling his side children of righteousness and is painting the other faction as children of the devil. The author and his faction have right beliefs. They understand correctly that Jesus, the word, became flesh and blood for our sake. Those other guys don't believe that Jesus was flesh and blood, and therefore they have fallen to the trappings of this world, and they are children of the devil. Time-honored way of making sure that you keep people on your side. Paint the others as sinful. I got to thinking about that this week. The author has split everyone into two groups, the children of righteousness and the children of evil. And the author has also said that we know what will be when Jesus comes back. Now, throughout the Gospels, we constantly see Jesus reaching across boundaries to the outcasts and to the sinners. He entered, interceded on behalf of women who were about to be stoned. He spoke to Samaritans. He praised them. He held them up as examples of how to be. He touched the unclean and healed them and brought them into the community again. The religious leaders and the secular rulers had spent generations defining who was in the community and who was not. And part of Jesus' ministry was redrawing those lines to include the people who are normally on the outside. I have a lot of trouble reconciling Jesus' redrawing of boundary lines with the author of First John casting shade on his opponents. And yet, Jesus' ministry of inclusion did exclude the people who could not be inclusive. So the moral of the story, I just don't know. I can't fit the two together. The part of this passage that makes it a little less mind-boggling is when the author says that when Jesus comes we will know what we will be. Because we do not yet fully know Christ, we do not yet fully know who will, we will be. And when Christ comes, all of that will change, and we will be perfectly children of God. We will be perfectly like Christ. And that is the part that I pin my hope to. We are God's children now. Jesus made that clear when he came. We are all God's children. And we do have an idea of what that means. Love God with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Love our neighbors as ourselves. Care for the widows and the orphans. Turn over tables when the temple becomes a marketplace of corruption. Reach out to include those the others exclude. 
I mean, sure, we don't know Christ perfectly. And no, we don't know what we will be. I mean, we are imperfect people. I mean, look how easy it was for First John to paint those who had different beliefs than his as children of evil. We don't know Christ perfectly, but we will. At some point, we will know Christ perfectly, as the author of First John says. We are children of God now, and when Christ comes, we will know completely what that means. We will know what we will be. Waiting is hard. Not knowing is hard. I mean, it's been how long since First John was written, and we are still waiting. Yeah, I was for sure the wait was over when the Cubbies won the World Series, but I was incorrect on that one. We are still waiting. We are still waiting to know what we will be. I guess the word of hope is this. God knows what we will be. God is the one with the vision and the one who is putting it into play. And at some point, Christ will share that fully with us and what it means for us to be children of God. So we can rest secure in knowing that even if we don't know, God does. And that at some point, Christ will come and Christ will show us exactly what that means. And exactly what it means to be who we will be. And exactly what it is we will be. May it be so.
as disciples of Christ, we truly are a blessed people. We are invited to the table each and every week. And so we come to the table not because we must, but because we may. For I received from the Lord, but I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus, on the night who was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it, saying, This is my body, which is for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And in like manner also, after the dinner, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. We pray in thanksgiving for the gifts that have been given to us. And now, because we have those gifts and God's grace, we go from here sharing what we have received. Amen. Our church continues to do God's work each and every day, and we need your support to continue to do so. Your tithes and offerings can be sent to the church in several different ways. For those of us here in person, we ask that you drop your offering in the plate as you exit the church, and we thank you for that. For those in our listening community now, you may send your check of your tithes and offerings using the link that's on our website and in staying connected. That'll bring you to PayPal. You enter the amount and then it comes here. Or you may use um, the post office. Just mail your check to post office box 456 Altoona, Iowa, and we thank you for your generosity. Holy One, we give thanks for the gifts that have been given to us. Please help us multiply these gifts so that we may do the good in the community, in the church, and the world around us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's time for your time out with the transition team that we do every Sunday morning, along with uh, Mary, LaCosta, Stephanie, Lori, Pastor Lisa, and myself. Um, we continue to meet to go through things that we need to do. And last week, everybody received these pretty color cards in the envelope. If you did not receive one last week, there's more up there on the sound booth, so please take one. We'd like to have these returned next week. Um, it's going to give us an insight to where we've been so we know where we need to go. Like Pastor said, Lisa said today, we don't know what we'll be, and we don't like waiting. 
We don't know what Altoona Christian Church will be. We don't like waiting to find out, but God's going to lead us in the direction that we need to go. We just need to be patient and to follow that. And this is one of the tools that we're going to use. So please do your best to fill these out. It's very important to um, this team and where we go. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to share with any of the members, please feel free to call, send an email or whatever. We are all willing to talk to any of you so we can get the information that we need. Thank you. Some other announcements. The lunch bunch will be bunching for lunch tomorrow. I worked all morning on that. <laughs> 11.30 at the Perkins Altoona, Altoona Perkins. Uh, please RSVP to Mary before then so that they can get the right number of people. Transition team, we are meeting Tuesday night. And we are continuing to have our Bible study at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. If you would like to join us, just let me know and I will send you the Zoom invitation. Did I miss anything? Fantastic. Will you join with me in prayer? Blessed be you, Lord, God of tenderness and compassion, rich in kindness and faithfulness, who keeps us in your love forever. Amen. Will you please rise in body or spirit and join in our sending hymn? We go forth this morning knowing that we are an imperfect people who view Christ imperfectly. But we also go forth this morning knowing that we are children of God. And so we bask in that love always and forever. Amen and Amen.